Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be talking about threat hunting, which is a very interesting topic for different types of people. This video aims to give you a comprehensive overview of all the different types of threat hunting that people talk about. The idea is regardless of whether you're a professional trying to get into threat hunting, or you're a student, an aspiring threat hunter, or you're a business looking to hire threat hunters or want to understand how it's useful for your business, you will find this video very helpful. Before we get started though, just want to thank our sponsors for this video, MCSoft. Please check them out using the link in the description. Show them that you appreciate this content. Once again, before we start, I always like to go through other guides and other people's approach to these topics just to understand what's going around in the industry before I start with my own comments. And I've gone through the guide by InfoSec Institute and also Security Intelligence. And one of the things I've noticed already is that a lot of people have a very different notion of what threat hunting means. And I've been able to narrow that down into three different categories or three different approaches to threat hunting. And of course, there's an overlap of each of these three categories, but I'll try to define it in a way that's functionally valid. So in the first case, you're looking for threats within your organization, essentially anything that a hacker could implant to exfiltrate information, cause any damage. And this is very strictly with regards to your business parameters and your priorities. If you're in this field, you might hear terms like prioritize threat intelligence parameters and other such jargon, but don't be scared by that. Most of these terms are just different ways of translating cybersecurity jargon into business jargon that can then be used to make organizational decisions. But at the end of the day, don't worry about it. If you're good at what you do, it doesn't matter what you call it. You can always pick up these terms depending on what organization you work for or where you're situated in the industry. The second type of threat hunting, I think involves looking for threats proactively. This means you're not just looking for threats within your organization, but in general. So you're always on the lookout for new threats that come up in the world, anywhere, anytime. Maybe because you want to add signatures for them, maybe because you want to be prepared, maybe because you want to understand the threat landscape. Now, there are many ways of doing that. Typically, you'll use some tools like First Total. We'll talk more about this later. Now, the third type of threat hunting involves not really hunting for threats yourself, but setting a trap and waiting for threats to hunt you. This is typically when you're setting up a lot of sandbox systems, you've got specific instructions, you're going to different hosts and domains that you think could be compromised, and the moment malware tries to infect these systems and you notice something unusual, you jump in and you try to get as much data out of that incident as possible. Now I know some of you might be category one is in threat hunting, category two is, or category three is in threat hunting, category one is. It doesn't matter, right? As I said, nomenclature is not important. What's important is the activities and how they're useful. So let's assume you're in category one and you're trying to look at different systems within your organization. Maybe this is one of them and you're looking for any potential indicators of compromise that could tell you that a hacker has infiltrated the system. Now, obviously, the very first things to check is if there's a process called 5694.exe. I mean, how blatant can you get? It depends on your level of expertise. Sometimes, you know, it's not uncommon for things like this to go unnoticed in large organizations, so you better check. But of course, in this day and age, it's very unlikely that you will notice something like this unless it's some kind of an amateur attack. The next simple thing you could obviously do on any system is look for auto runs. These are applications that start at startup. You can look at scheduled tasks. These are essentially things that can happen automatically on your system at any time. Tools that a hacker could use, but again, it's very unlikely you will notice anything blatant here. Now, once we go past the first level, it gets interesting. Now, most sophisticated malware is likely going to hide inside something else which could be a Windows process, for example. So maybe it's infiltrated csrss.exe, very common one, they infiltrate service host because your system is always running these processes. And if they've managed to inject malicious code into one of them, they can in a very subtle and undetectable way perform whatever malicious operation they desire. So checking the integrity of each of these critical system processes that are always active on the system is a very important part of the forensic side of threat hunting. Now, the next thing, if it's a Windows system, is the registry. This is another key location where malware might hide. So it's very important to do some kind of a check of the registry. 
compare it with a default system registry and see what changes are there and it should be viewed with suspicion. Once again, the level of detail you go into really depends on your organization's priorities and also the level of freedom that each system has. So for example, if a system is just a default system, the employee using it doesn't need to have a high level of access. And then if you see a lot of strange programs installed or any kind of manipulations or even a settings change, it becomes suspicious. Whereas if it's an admin system, it's going to be much harder to detect suspicious activity among the general activity of the user. And I think if we focus on this topic too much, we're slowly drifting more into malware forensics rather than threat hunting. So I'll bring us right back to discuss the second category. And this involves hunting for threats live, as I said, proactively, regardless of where they begin to show up. If you're working with an AV company, this might be a common thing you do. And even if it's an organization that's not specifically involved in cybersecurity, you might want to do this just to make sure that, and you're actually protected against the latest threats. Of course, you can outsource this task to other specific organizations. There are lots of ways of doing it, but I think everyone at some level is doing some proactive threat hunting as well. Now, a very common approach here is using things like Yara rules. If you've never heard of Yara rules, I'll give you a very quick introduction. Think of it as a programming language, but it's essentially just for rules to match and recognize malware or anything really. So here's an example code format. So the rule silent banker is the top level abstraction. These are rules that you can set up. And then within the rule are the different types of conditions that you're looking for. Meta means the kind of metadata here. For example, this is the description and these are just the different variables. And then you've got strings. So A, B, and C are essentially three variables and they're just defining specific strings that we might look for. And now the last part, which is the most important is the condition. And whatever you write before this, you can use it in the last part to define when the rule is going to alert you. So in this case, we're saying it's A or B or C. Instead, if we said A and B and C, it would mean that all three of these strings have to be present for a file to match this rule. It's not that difficult of a concept to grasp, and you can very quickly set up different types of rules to get the kind of feed that you're looking for. Fars Total Intelligence has this functionality built in, so you can always create a different YAR rule template or just set up a different rule and pretty much put whatever you want here. So for example, maybe we want to look for files that mention encryption. By the way, don't do this. I'm just using this as an example. This is not sensible rule, but whatever, right? And then maybe we want to look for files that include the kind of words that occur in a ransom note, which would say something like your important files have been, and we'll just leave it at that because it might say encrypted, deleted, encrypted with AES-256. And then we can say in conditions, all of them or one of them or A or B as we saw before. And then once this rule is set up and active, it is going to produce a feed for us like the one here. So essentially these are all files that recently matched one of the rules like the one described here, which is just a generic rule for ransomware. And this is a way to get an active feed of new malware coming to you whenever it is seen on the wild west of the internet. Now let's talk a little bit about the third type of threat hunting, which is setting up a sandbox environment. A very common way of doing that is using Cuckoo Sandbox and then monitoring domain lists. And you can obviously monitor for a list of newly hacked domains. And what you would do in such an environment is visit as many domains as possible all the time until your system gets eventually compromised organically. As I mentioned, you're not trying to hunt the threat down. You're more like setting up a trap in the forest, waiting for the threat to walk into it. And once it tries to infect one of your analysis systems, you can study the threat. Now, obviously, modern malware is very aware of this and will often try to avoid any kind of deployment in a VM environment, which is why, again, you need to enable countermeasures, make sure there are no processes that the malware can detect or obfuscate these processes if necessary if you're doing this type of threat hunting. Some of you might say this is not really threat hunting because you're not going out looking for the threat, but I still think it's hunting because while well, setting a trap and catching the thing is still hunting it. So there you go. That's essentially a quick overview. So I hope this video helps you understand how the process works 
and encourages you to learn more about this field, get interested. And if you're a business and you've just heard the technical term, I hope this gives you an understanding of what's actually happening so you can decide and prioritize what's important for your business. Please like and share the video if you enjoyed it or found it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security channel. A lot more interesting stuff coming up on cybersecurity. And also, by the way, we do a lot of consulting in these areas, helping organizations evaluate their cybersecurity policies, testing endpoints, and a whole lot more. If you're interested in any of that or would like to engage as a business, feel free to reach out using the business form at the pcsecuritychannel.com. Once again, a big thank you to MCSoft, our sponsors. Check them out using the link in the description. This is Leo from the PC Security Channel. Thank you so much for watching and as always, stay informed, stay secure.